Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the RRI function. So what the RRI function does is it gives you the equivalent interest rate uh, on the growth of an investment. So in financial circles, you may be familiar with the term CAGR, Compound and Annual Growth Rate. Uh, in this example, what, let's say that we had a portfolio of stocks. How would we gauge a yearly return after a period of, of uh, multiple years, say five years? Uh, notwithstanding, the after each year, maybe there are ups and downs. Maybe there's good years and bad years. How would you gauge after five years the annual growth rate? So the price fluctuations at the end of the year for the different years after five years, you can see that it varies. And if we wanted to kind of get a yearly rate, we can kind of do a mean or an average. And that's where the term uh, CAGR comes in. Uh, this is the mean annual growth rate of investment over a specific period of a term longer than a year. And this is from Investopedia.com. And so basically, this is really not a, a real return, but it gives you a gauge uh, on a yearly return, uh, kind of smoothing out uh, each of the year's fluctuations to give you a yearly rate over a longer period of time. So um, using this number in it by itself is probably not a good idea, but, but using this number to complement or supplement other figures probably kind of gives you a gauge of the investment performance. So in previous versions of Microsoft uh, prior to Excel 2013, uh, you can actually do this with uh, this particular calculation. You have the ending value over the beginning value to the power of 1 to the number of years minus 1. And you have to kind of pr perform those uh, calculations. Now with Excel 2013, there basically is one function that does all that. So let's see how that works. Basically, let's say we have our beginning value of uh, $10,000, right? And our ending value is $126,000. And maybe by the, uh, whoops, let me see, 10, not 126000 $12,600. Uh, that would be a very good investment. Anyways, if the term maybe was five years, if we made that in five years, what would be our annual growth rate? So with RRI, all you need are three arguments. So you type equals RRI, let me go ahead and tab, and all I need is the n per, which is the number of periods, basically, is our term here, and our present value, which is our beginning value, and our future value is our ending value. If I press return, we have our return of 4.7%. Let me go ahead and make this a percentage here. Whoops. Let me get about two decimal places, 4.73. So prior to Excel 2013, we didn't have this RRI formula. We'd have to go and use this formulaic approach. We didn't have this RRI function. So I would have to type equals the ending value, which is this, divided by the beginning value, which is that. And I had to put that actually in parentheses. Let me go ahead and put this in parentheses first. And then to the power, and the power is basically the a caret symbol. So that's shift the number six. Uh, open parentheses, 1 divided by the number of years, which is 5, close parentheses, minus 1, right? Press enter, and we have our 4.73. Let me go ahead and put that in percentage and move the decimal places. And so basically, that would be our approach on Excel versions prior to 2013 to determine the compounded annual growth rate, or in this case, the RRI. So if I said before, the compounded annual growth rate, it's not a real number. It's kind of an average of an investment over a period of multiple years. And it helps smooth out the variability of ups and downs at each ending year to kind of give you a gauge of the growth rate of that investment. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.